this is me giving you the code snippet that we have used in every single algo that we have developed in the last five years. It's a code snippet that will turn any algo 200% better and it takes only three minutes to add it to your code. Copy, paste, done. Hey everyone, welcome to the second chapter of the Pro Real Algos Learning Program. For you who don't know me yet, I'm Carl Eriksson and I'm the founder of Pro Real Algos. In this program, I'm sharing the combined knowledge and experience of me and all my colleagues on the topic of algo development and algo trading in general. If this is the first video you're watching, you should step back and instead start with the first video of the first chapter. And link to that is in the description down below. All right, so in the last chapter, we covered the essentials of coming up and finding new trading ideas. We covered the basics on how to code those ideas in pro real time, and we covered the basics of evaluating those ideas. In this chapter, we're taking the idea that made it in the previous step, and we start building a system out of it. We will go into detail on what to look for in the backtest, and we will go through how to carefully optimize your system to avoid overly optimizing your code. We will study individual trades for more detailed points of improvement and we will look at a couple of shortcuts that you can take when developing algos. In this video though we will start by adding some filters and features and finesse to the trading idea that we coded in the previous video. So grab a coffee and join me. All right here's the back test from the previous video and here is the code. Now let's try and make it even better. Let's start by adding some filters. We have a total of 355 trades. I would actually prefer that we had more trades than that before adding filters, since we don't want to get under 250 trades in the backtest. But this is what we got. One good rule of thumb for someone who's just starting developing algos is to never add more than one filter. And why is that? Well, simply because the more filters you add, the higher risk that you are overly optimizing your system. So curve fading isn't really a binary state. It's not like either your system is overly optimized or it is not. It's not black or white in that sense. It's uh, rather a scale uh, on which at you at some point when you're optimizing, you're making the system better. But at some point you're reaching a, a tipping point where if you continue optimizing your algo, your algo will actually perform worse when you start it. And we're doing a whole video on that topic of curve fitting and optimizing in a coming video. So what's a good filter to start with? Well, a very simple one is checking if there's any correlation with the day and month of the trade. Like, can we see that this system have a strong edge entering trades in the beginning of a week? Or can we see that uh, most losses are trades that are entered in the end of the year? Or is there an edge saying that the best trades are entered in the beginning of a month? Let's, let's look at that. Let's start by adding the day condition. If day of week equals x, then day condition is false, else day condition is true. Let's optimize that x variable. From 1 to 7. Actually, I will do it from 0 to 7. The reason for that is by including the value 0, I will see how the algo was performing originally without this entry condition. All right, here are the results. So here are the x values. And as you can see, only one value is actually better than not having this entry condition at all. And that is day of the week four. So by avoiding taking trades on Thursdays, we actually improve the results of this algo by a little bit more than 3%. But we lose 70 trades. So let's keep that. If day of week is four, then avoid entering any new trades. Now let's look if we should avoid trades in a specific month. If month, current month equals y, then month condition is false, else month condition is true. And I will optimize it from 0 to 12. And as you can see here, there are three different values that are better than the value of 0. So 
we will actually add all these three months to the code. So 8, 1 and 11. Let's, let's run it again. Yeah, it looks good, but we are missing a lot of trades. So I will actually remove two of these months so that we keep the backtest with 250 trades or more. And please note here that I'm only running this optimization on 200,000 units. I have access to 1 million units, so I'm running this optimization on only 20% of the historical data that I have access to. So that is a very strong and important measure to avoid overly optimizing your code. All right, so we have added a filter. Now let's see if we can add some basic functionality to the system. I see that we only have one exit condition in this idea and we don't even have a trailing stop or a target profit. So let's add that together with a second exit condition. Let's start by adding the trailing stop code. And then let's add uh, target profit. And now let's optimize it. It's easy to overly optimize your trailing stop and your target profit code. So I will use a larger distance in the steps in this optimization. So I want to optimize my trailing stop code between 0% and 2% and I will do it with, with a step interval of 0.5. I want my target profit to start at 1% and end at 4% and I will use a step size of 0.5. All right, so for some reason, the X value isn't being optimized in this uh, backtest. I'm not sure why. Let's rerun it. Let's rerun it, but let's add a different variable for it. C. All right, the optimization have finished. The one with the highest gain is with a target profit of 3.5% and a trailing stop starting at 1%. But as you can see here, the drawdown is substantially larger than using a trailing stop of 0.5% and a target profit of 2.5%. So let's compare those. Right, so the one with a smaller drawdown have a win rate of 47% and a profit factor of 1.62 with the total gain of 2,900 euros. Let's check the other one. All right, so this one have a higher win rate, a uh, similar profit factor, a little bit smaller. The other one had 1.62, but the max drawdown it's not showing here is almost twice the max drawdown of the previous one. The total gain is 8% more than the previous one. So in this case, I would rank having a smaller drawdown higher. So we will use this one. Let's add that 0.5, 2.5. Let's add a final exit condition. We will use a simple RSI value exit condition. If RSI value of C is bigger than D, then sell at market. And now let's optimize those values. I want to test three different RSI's. I want to test 2, 14, and 30. So 2, 30, I will set a step interval of 2. And I want to exit the trade if the RSI value is somewhere between 5 and 50 and 90. And I will use a step size of 10 again to avoid overly optimizing the system. The optimization have finished and I don't want to use an RSI other than 2, 14 and 30. So the best one is RSI 30 
with a value over 90. Let's try that one. All right, looks good. Let's use that one. If RSI 30 is bigger than 90, then we sell at market. All right, so we have added the basic functionality and we have added the filter. Now there's only finesse left. And I have saved the best for last. This is me giving you the code snippet that we have used in every single algo that we have developed in the last five years. It's a code snippet that will turn any algo 200% better and it takes only three minutes to add it to your code. Copy, paste, done. So this is no joke, it's a substantial part of the success of our algos and it's been a secret up until now. But I'm sorry, this is only for the premium users. So for the free viewers watching this, I will have to say goodbye to you now. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.